I'm making an animated short film. And because I'm doing most of the work myself, I realized I needed to really nail the story before I got into the heavy lifting of animation. So in order to do that, I did some research into Grease Pencil and its storyboarding capabilities. I developed a little bit of a workflow in order to turn storyboard frames out really, really quickly. And I wanted to share that with you. So this is my, the scene that I created my storyboard in. So essentially the log line of my animation is human buys ice cream from a vending machine robot sees it and it's like oh my gosh like that will make my life so much better so he comes out and tries to buy ice cream but because he's not a human he runs into the conflict of not being able to use a human design device and so he tries all these different ways to get the ice cream until the kicker at the end as you can see this is just a 3d scene that has a 2d drawing effect added to it and you might be asking why do you have to add that 2D drawing effect? You don't necessarily have to, but what I've noticed with trying to communicate stories to people is that you have to present them to people in a language that they understand. And so everyone's seen a storyboard, and so sometimes it's just easier to communicate a story in, the, in a visual representation that people understand and get. And creating a storyboard like this also is just so much easier than drawing every frame. For one, I don't have to worry about perspective. I can play around with my camera angles and be more creative with where I place it. I can also add props and stuff in there. But another huge thing is you look at my character here. If you have a basic model of your character, then kind of moving him around the scene to tell your story becomes significantly easier. So I, I just love working with this workflow and I'm definitely gonna use it again for future animations. But real quick, I just wanna show you the basics of how you can create a scene like this. So I'm going to create a new scene I and mean, we're going to make something just to show you how it works. So what we want to do is we, we have this object and we want to create those grease pencil lines all along the edges. All you have to do is if you click the object, click Shift A, go to Grease Pencil, you're able to add Grease Pencil objects here, but under here you have Scene Line Art, Collection Line Art, and Object Line Art. And all of these are exactly what they sound. So if I go to Object Line Art, you can see these kind of lines showing up on my object. If I click off, you can, you can barely see them, but they're there. And all you have to do is if you click on your object and click on your line art, this is where the actual lines are being stored. The object just defines where they're, they're being put. So once you click that, you have a couple options as well. So if you go to the modifiers panel while clicking line art, the most important one is line thickness. So here is where you can kind of play around with how bold you want your lines and how narrow you want them. So you can play with the line thickness here, but while selecting the line art panel, you have access to a ton of different other modifiers in association with your grease pencil object. One thing to keep in mind with all of this is right now I'm in camera view and the lines are appearing essentially how you'd expect them to. If I come out of camera view and add a couple more objects, so if I add a monkey and go shift A, grease pencil for the object, you see the line art is kind of all over the place for the monkey. And if I go back to my camera view, it looks a lot more normal. One thing to keep in mind with all of this is that your line art is calculated based on the camera view. And so if you zoom out of the camera view, your line art will kind of start looking wonky and almost random. So when you're making edits or when you're trying to stylize things, sometimes it's really helpful to be in the camera view just so you know what's happening. Another thing to keep in mind, so right now we're not in the rendered view, which means it's gonna look a little bit different when we go into render view. And so you can see here, it doesn't look too much different, but you can see our material is acting like a 3D material, even though our, our line art is acting like a hand-drawn uh, grease pencil object. Um, and so what we have to do is we have to add a material to our object that will interact in a 2D sense. And so what we want to do is we want to create this one solid color. 
so that it looks more like a, a 2D scene. In order to do that, it's pretty easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the principal BSDF. I'm just going to add a color ramp. I add the color ramp to the surface and make the interpolation constant. Now I have one solid color. All of this is really helpful when you're adding lines and kind of 2D effects to 3D objects. But sometimes what's faster is if you add literally two 2D drawings into your scene to show the movement of a character. A good example of this is in my storyboard when I show the woman walking up to the vending machine, typing in the button, and then reaching in for her snack. Now, again, this is pretty simple. You just kind of need to know where to look. So if I deselect everything, and click Shift A, and go to Grease Pencil, Blink. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to add kind of a blank canvas to my screen. If I go over to draw mode and draw, I can draw a 2D object. If I... Now, the issue is sometimes when you draw a 2D object, it, the, the drawing kind of sneaks behind an object and it's, it's hard to control. So if I command Z that or control Z that and go back to camera mode, so you have these two options up here. This defines where in space the drawing is going to be. And this essentially tells you what perspective the, the drawing is going to be. So if I went over to this left-hand dropdown, and the origin, what that's saying is every time I draw, the drawing is going to be placed at the origin of my world space. That could be useful. The second one is 3D cursor. cursor. This, in my opinion, is the most useful way to draw. It basically places your drawing wherever the 3D cursor is. So if I place it here, go back to my drawing, and I draw a little bit, you see the 3D drawing is centered around the 3D cursor. This allows you to more effectively place your drawings where you want them to be. And you can, you can either use this clicker here to place a 3D cursor, or you can use under your 3D cursor drop down here. You can kind of manipulate it. What I'll usually do is I'll use the clicker to get a general location for it. And then I'll use these slides to, to refine my selection. So if I go back here and I re erase all this stuff, what's really cool about the grease pencil is if I go over to my timeline, you see it automatically puts a keyframe where I started drawing. So if I add a really simple, sorry, I'm drawing with my mouse, forgive me. <laughs> so you can see my kind of silly drawn here. But again, like I said before, a keyframe was added when you added the object. Now if I dragged my playhead over to frame 10, for instance, turned on automatic keying, and added, for instance, a circle, you can see the previous drawing is removed and the current drawing remains. This is a good way to add animatic animations to your storyboards in order to communicate certain parts of your story better. Thanks guys, I hope that helps. Again, we're all learning together, but if there's any way I can help you or if something's not working the way I showed it on the video, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you on that. Um, also, if you're able to like and subscribe, that will help me reach more people who might want to learn Grease Pencil's storyboarding fundamentals. Thanks again, talk to you later, bye.